Hi there. This is National Master Aaron Cooper, and I'm here with another game review. And today we're looking at one of the skilling open games that took place this week. It's between Grandmaster Wesley So, who played white, and Timur Rajabov, who played black. So let's get to it. Wesley plays c4. This is known as the English. Rajabov answers with knight f6. Uh, Rajabov is a, an expert in the King's Indian defense, which uh, starts with g6. But in this game, he decided to play something a little more traditional. He played e5. So both players developed their knights. So this is the four knights system of the English. Bishop to b4 by uh, Rajabov. Uh, getting ready to castle as black does not have any pieces in the way. And white brings the queen out looking at some light squares and also giving himself the option of uh, taking the knight back with the queen. Okay, so he jumps into d5. Now the general rule of thumb is you don't want to move your pieces twice in the first 10 moves or so, but that's just the general rule of thumb. In this instance, it's actually not so bad because if black were to take, white takes back, black would have to spend time um, protecting, uh, sorry, uh, moving the knight. And after a move like, say, either e4 or queen b3, we have an open c file and white has this target on c7. So that's one of the benefits of trading off this knight is that it opens the c-file for white. So Rajabov decided not to. He just brought his rook in the middle. Rooks like open files. Now the file is not open right now. However, there's a good chance that it will, uh, especially since black has a pawn in the center. You can imagine white is going to play d4 at some point, and then his rook is looking a lot better. Certainly a lot better than when it was on the f square. Okay, now I thought this was an interesting move. Queen to f5, again, moving uh, the queen twice in the opening. Um, and, and we'll see towards the end of the game. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe White should get on with it and develop the rest of his pieces. Keep that in mind. Okay, so uh, the threat right now is to take here and open up the king. That's why he played queen to f5. Rajabov says, go ahead. I'm just going to develop my pieces. I'll take a bad pawn structure uh, as long as I can keep developing my pieces and Maybe, with your king in the middle, I'll have some attacking chances. So that's what happened. So Wesley So has uh, chances in the end game because these pawns in particular are weak. They can't be protected by other pawns. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. The h7 one cannot be protected by other pawns. And these two guys are doubled, so they uh, get in each other's way. Pardon me, that was not played. Okay, so let's see what was played, and we'll get to the key position here shortly. So uh, Wesley's gaining some space on the queen side, develop our bishop, castle, bishop f5. Okay. So black has pretty much all his pieces in the game, except for probably the queen's rook. Queen's rook is yet 
to be decided how it's going to be used, whether it's going to stay there and maybe open the A file, or if it'll come to uh, the D or C files, perhaps. That's in its future. White, on the other hand, has improved to develop the bishop, castled queenside, but yet still does not have these two pieces doing anything. So Wesley So wants to change that, rook e g1, probably looking at moves like g4. And it would be great if uh, he could open up this file because uh, Black's King is in the open. Okay, now here Wesley plays uh, d4, trying to open up lines. He would like to open up this diagonal towards the black king, in addition to possibly opening up uh, the g file. Okay, bishop to e4, knight to d2, bishop back. So Rajabov puts a piece in front of his king, adding some protection. Knight f3. Kind of a strange move. Uh, I think that was a missed opportunity. Probably it was time to bring the bishop out to e2. So Wesley uh, played some moves, uh, wasted quite a few tempi in this game. Okay, Rajabov decides he's going to open up the A file, or try to. Wesley decides, nope, no you're not. I'm closing it up. C6, A4, C takes, A takes. And now A4. So, Wesley has been able to at least keep the A file closed. However, um, Black is pretty happy because this pawn is uh, potentially going to pester this bishop and the rook perhaps might enter the game either through rook a5 or rook a4 in the future and also uh, there's an open c file towards the king so let's see how the game went from here okay bishop a3 just to stop that pawn good move Pawn takes, pawn takes. What did I say earlier? Rooks like open files. This rook had a pawn in its way, and so that's why Rajabov took on d4. Now the e rook has his open file. Okay, so now here is the critical moment in the game. What do you think Rajabov played here? It's black to play, and it's a spectacular move. Now, in such a position, especially since white has not activated these two pieces, and there's an open C file towards the king, black would love to open up the king some more. So that's, that's the hint. I'll give you a few seconds to have another think. Okay. So here it is. He plays the spectacular knight to d5. Wow. What a move. That's just giving up a free knight, right? No, it's not. White cannot capture. Because after capturing, there's rook check. Now, if the king comes here, thank you very much, that's checkmate. And what did I say about an open file? Well, this is why we want open files. The king now does not have access to those three squares, hence the checkmate. Okay, what happens if he doesn't go to d2? What if he goes to b2? Well, it's not any better. Check. Bishop to a5. And that bishop is coming here, going to check the white king. And if it's not going to be mate, there's going to be some uh, loss of material. So, for example, if white tries b3, 
bishop to b2, a3, takes, check, and check. Look at these bishops just slicing the white king. And I mean, this is most likely going to lead to a mate after rook here. White is not going to survive this. Okay, so let's go back to the amazing knight d5 position. So Wesley uh, correctly does not take, moves his king. Okay, in this position, white can take the knight. However, understandably, from the previous move, uh, he sensed the danger, and so he opted not to. Knight to c3, knight hops right in. Hitting the bishop. Can't take that, otherwise we'd lose the rook. Check. Okay. Check. Draw the king up. Check. Very pretty. King goes up here. Cut off the squares, so now the king only has this as a flight square. Check. And mate. So this was obviously a checkmate threat as well. Now, what if the white king did not go up, but chose to go back with king to b3. Well, black just grabs the rook and black has the uh, material. Uh, it's a little more even now. In fact, no, black has uh, is up the exchange, my apologies. And after, say, rook check, the attack continues. In fact, it might lead to a similar where the king winds up going up the board and losing some squares. So that also, whoops, also does not look promising. So very good. That was a fantastic game by Rajabov. Um, and it was highlighted by this incredible move here. Note that white is not playing with these two pieces yet. Black has nice open files. The king has moved the pawns in front of the king. White has done so. So black wants to open it up, and so he plays knight to d5, hoping that this opens up, and then we have an open c line to the black king. An incredible idea, not one that you'd naturally think about, because you'd say, oh, well, that's not a move, because it's just a free knight. But that's what makes these guys so good. Okay, so thank you. I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, uh, please consider uh, liking the video and hitting that subscribe button. Until next time, we'll see you later.